to my channel. Um, before I begin this video, I just want to say thank you to all of those who have subscribed to my channel. I have a total of 13 subscribers, so thank you very much. It is really appreciated. I know um, to some it's like 13, really. But yeah, to me, that's that's a huge success because when I started my channel, I literally had two followers and that was my husband and my personal page. So I gained a whole 11 subscribers um, since I've been on YouTube. So anyway, um, if you're new to this channel, welcome. So am I. <laughs> um, I've only been YouTubing for a little while now. Uh, not even a month, to be honest. So um, I'm still, you know, I'm still learning. I'm sure there's a lot that I have to learn. Um, but I am willing and able. So with that, I uh, I plan to get far. Um, so today's video is going to be a tutorial on how I create my birthday pins. Um, if you go to my Etsy shop, the link is up there. Um you'll see that I make and sell birthday pins, birthday corsages, whatever you want to call them. Um, and so that is what I'm making today. Today's theme is Rugrats. Who doesn't love Rugrats? This has been a pretty popular theme since last year. Um, to date, I've made well over like 100 letters and numbers of this theme so it's been pretty popular um so i'm gonna go ahead and do the pin but before i do the pin i want to show you guys this birthday pin that i got started on yesterday it's not finished yet um this one is nightmare before christmas and it is for um a four-year-old little girl her name is jade and her mom um always orders birthday letters and, and birthday numbers from me um, since her first birthday. So it's her fourth birthday. Last year I did a birthday pin for the first time for her in Paw Patrol Halloween theme. And so this year it's Nightmare Before Christmas Halloween theme. Hence the reason I incorporated the orange and purple and green. Um, but it is not finished yet. Once it is, I will post up a picture in this video to let you see how this one came out. Um, since I didn't get to do it on the camera. So um, I'm going to do a Rugrats theme today. And I'm just going to kind of show you what materials I use um, and how I assemble it. I already pre-cut the ribbon. So this video won't show you like how I cut the ribbon and how I glue the ribbon. Um, but I will provide dimensions and stuff in the description below if you, in case you want to make one. So first things first, glue gun, glue six, pair of scissors, sharper the better. You're cutting fabric, so you don't want your fabric to fray. A lighter to seal the ends, measuring tape to measure your ribbon. Now here I have cardstock. This is about three by three, perfect circle. This is my base. This is what I glue my ribbon on to form the base, okay? And then I have three inch or three by three, perfect circle, um, felt, and it's stiff felt. And this is what I apply to the back of my pin. And safety pins. This will go on last and I will show you how I do that. So let's get started. First things first, I pick a theme ribbon um, that I'm going to use and I take a yard of ribbon and out of a yard of ribbon I cut it down to make one pin. So for example, um, this is a one inch ribbon. These pieces here are about um, four inches long. 
when they're open. And so I fold it in half and I kind of glue the edge. Okay, so that's where I get my little petals from. All right, and then my long ribbon is seven inches long. The width is five by or five eighths. And then my center ribbon is seven eighths and it's also seven inches long. For this pin, I chose to use all of these colors. Um, so we got pink, yellow, a turquoise, a lime green, and white. Where the white is, the name is gonna come down in the center. So that's gonna be our base for the name. And then we have our rosettes. So I'm probably gonna incorporate some more rosettes and that'll give me the opportunity to show you guys how I add the colors into um, these pieces here. This was leftover ribbon. It was about three inches long. And so it has good like images of the characters. So this is Chucky. Then we have one that says Rugrats. We have Lil. We don't have Phil for some reason. Um, we have Angelica. And we have Tommy. So what I plan on doing with these is incorporating them on to the ribbons. We'll see how that looks after, but first things first. So I'm gonna pull these apart, and I kinda like to leave them in place um, to where I, where I intend on putting them, just to kinda keep me focused. So I kinda create the pin outside of the pin. Um, so these are gonna go last. And then these, and then these. So here we have our pink ribbon and then our base white ribbon. So what I'm gonna do is take and put some glue on the edge of the ribbon. First, you really wanna like heat, um, heat seal your, your ribbon um, so that it avoids it from fraying. There's gonna be so much on top of here, so I'm really not worried about the top. But a good practice is to kind of like just heat seal your ribbon. Throw some glue, and then place down. So now we have our tail, okay? That's step one. Step two, we're gonna place our center ribbon. We're gonna place it right down the middle. Again, gluing the center onto your center on the cardstock. For those of you who do not use glue, um, hot glue often, just be careful because it can get really hot and burn your fingertips. So that would be our center, okay? Now we're gonna move on to the next color, being yellow, and we'll place it over. I'm gonna clip this edge here and heat it, okay? We'll heat seal that, add glue, Epic fail. Add glue and then place. And now you want to start placing these straight on the on the cardstock, but as you bring it down, you want to like bring it in an angle so that it doesn't overlay the other color, um, and so that you can see both colors peek out. The next color is yellow over here. We'll do the same thing. Trim this piece here. Throw some heat. Some glue. We won't drop this one. Okay. 
kind of run that one down now, okay? Same thing with the blue, with the turquoise. We're going to apply the turquoise on top here and on top here. So let's heat seal the edge, add some glue Overlay it on top. Same with this side. Heat. Glue. Overlay. So now we have our our um I forget what it's called and we're gonna add the green to go over we're still gonna let the pink peek out so we want to place it like right center there. So add some glue. Just run it down. Same thing with this side. Add some glue. Run it down. And there you have that part. Okay. What I like to do is I like to cut them in an angle, um, leaving this this center one kind of with a uh, fish tail cut. And so I do that by just clipping the center. You just wanna make sure that it's centered and even on both sides. And don't pull because you will get fraying. If you pull, just cut it to where it actually falls off. Um, remember, it is fabric. It's it's grass green ribbon, so um, that one little stitch right there will cause fraying. And then you want to heat seal it. You don't have to burn it too much because it seals. It's it's polyester, so um, it seals pretty quick and easy. So my center would be like that. Now what I want to do is measure them out to make sure that I have an even cut here. To get that look so I want my tails to be you know diagonal um, and do the same thing to the other side again if your scissors are sharp you won't have any issues and then what you want to do is heat seal scraps together so then what you're gonna do take each one and seal it to avoid any fraying and one time across is enough it heats it so don't have to worry about going back and forth and 
maybe burning the ribbon to where it's in an uneven shape. Like literally, if you just run it across easy, it heats up. And there's our base with our tail. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is place these bad boys all around to see how we want to do this. I just want to get it in frame for you. Um, so first things first, what I like to do is make sure that all of my characters are facing the same way. Um, so if I'm putting it down this way, I want that one to look down. So I gotta flip this one around. That one's gonna look down. This one. So it's kind of going um, clockwise. Now the only two that I don't like to put clockwise are the two on the left hand side. For the simple fact that when you're looking at the pen, it looks like it's upside down. So. Those two I kind of um, assemble to mirror the other side, okay? Now I can go with six or I can go with seven. I'm thinking we're gonna go with maybe seven, let's see here. Let's see how this looks. And again, I just, it's all trial and error. It's really how you like it. Um, you know, how you, what look you prefer. You know? Everybody has it. And this piece is a little shorter, but it was because I ran out of ribbon. Um, and I didn't realize, so we'll move that one up. I didn't realize that I had a little less than a yard of this ribbon, so um, I had to improvise. But we can do this like that. And then what we can do, since we don't have too much of the pink peeking out, we can take some of our pink ribbon And place it in. So what we'll do is take about four inches of this okay. we'll take about four inches of each and we're gonna make this playful. We're actually going to improvise with all of the ribbons and make different color loops. Okay, so we'll do four inches of each. We have some, we have some glitter in there too that we can incorporate. Maybe like a, a purple glitter. Let's see how it'll look. Let me think about that for a second. So we'll add the pink, we'll add the teal, and then we need the yellow. And then, So we can go, we might have to cut more. And so what we'll do is just kind of place them. So it would be pretty cool to put like pink, teal, yellow, pink, teal, yellow. Now we don't want two pinks together, which is what we're trying to avoid. So if we go pink, teal, yellow, pink, teal, yellow, we have another pink here. Um, so, 
thinking maybe we move one of these out and that way we can place the other let's see let's see how that looks and that way we have pink teal yellow pink teal and yellow that's more like it all right so we're gonna heat seal and then heat seal and then glue this edge and fold it over Okay, and that's how we get the rosette. So what we'll do is add we'll add it to that like that. Same thing here and I'm going to go ahead and cut another piece since we're going to use two of each. I was up last night trying to um, finish these off and I tried to do the video last night and I was just like not into it. <laughs> I was like dragging and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go to bed because you know when you're like in one of those moods where you're tired but you're pushing yourself to do things anyway, you start messing things up. So that's kind of um, what I what I thought was gonna happen. And I was like, you know what? I don't really have spare ribbon to um, mess around with in case something goes wrong. So I wasn't even going to risk it. I said, no, nope, tomorrow is another day. Um, and I left it at that. It was like almost two in the morning. Um, I was super tired. I had been up all day since like six. Um, just cleaning and you know doing my chores so that I could try to enjoy one day of this long weekend so I figured if I can get things done early yesterday and early today that um, I could enjoy tomorrow off and maybe barbecue or um, just kind of relax just kind of chill out and enjoy the day so at least that's my plan you know I don't know that that's how it's gonna happen um, I would really really like to wake up in the morning tomorrow and make my way to Hobby Lobby and see if I can pick up some fabric for some uh, Halloween appliques that I'm supposed to be doing so that I don't have to go during the week. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make it. It just all depends on how I wake up and, you know, what I have to do. My son still has to work, so I have to drive him to work. Um, and then I'll see how I feel after. Um, I just can't wait for him to get his license already. He was supposed to get it, and due to COVID, um, that got pushed back some. And then he started working, and his days off are Tuesday and Friday. So it's really difficult because I work on Tuesdays and Friday, and his dad works on Tuesday and Friday. So neither one of us can take him um, unless we plan ahead which we're going to have to get on because I need him driving already. Yep. He's already working. He needs to be driving. And so this here is how the pin will look. I forgot to heat seal this one, so I'll just do it now. And so that's how we'll do this pin. I'm going to try to push it in so that the rosette is not huge popping out. Um, it doesn't overpower the tail. So let's get started. We will begin by doing fours. So I like to start with the top. 
and just center it to your your tail here okay and I leave it about leave the, the rosette about an inch maybe yeah about an inch from the circle and then we will do the bottom same thing leave about an inch and just make sure that it's centered now we do our left and our right again an inch away and making sure that it's centered Same thing for the other side. You know, the good part about these is that if you don't like the way it's placing, you could just tear it off. That's the reason why I use paper. A lot of people use felt as their base. But I find that with paper, at least if, if I don't place it right and I need to do it over again, I can just tear it off and rebuild. Um, it just works for me better. So if that is helpful for you, great. Like, so, okay, perfect example. You see, I did centers and it wasn't supposed to be. This is what I get for talking. So you see, I can just pull it off and I can just take this piece off because it's still fresh, right? Um, if this was felt, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I just tear that piece off. And the longer you leave it, the more, um, the harder it gets to remove. Since we're using um, six of these, I had to place them differently. So I forgot about that, which is why what happened happened. So what we're gonna do is place our next one, it's pink. And then we're gonna go over, okay? And then we're going to place our blue. And then we're gonna go over with this. And then our yellow. So it's like that, okay? So let's go pink. You just want to keep the same space in between them. Just to make it look symmetrical. Blue. I don't know if this is a blue. To me, it looks turquoise. I'm going to call it turquoise. And we'll add our yellow. Okay. 
So we have our first side, and then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Starting from the bottom, we'll do all the pink. And then we'll place our last two pieces. Now, if you feel like for whatever reason it's not um, adhered enough, then I'm going to show you what you can do to go around the edges and just make sure that everything is um, in its place, that everything is secure. You don't have to do this step, but I prefer to, um, just to make sure everything is down right. So I would take the edges, once everything is down, and just run some glue there and just apply it down. Okay, do that to all your pieces. Just to make sure you have full coverage um, and that none of your ribbon can be removed, pulled, or anything. Now, I'm just going quick for this video purpose. Uh, I would never sell a pin being done this quickly. So the same thing, just kind of making sure. I hear the embroidery machine going, so I think my husband is working. So this is what that looks like, okay? Now, what we would do is take I don't know that I have one done already, um, but we would take a center and then apply it there. So I don't know which color I would prefer to use on this. Um, we have so many different options. However, most of them look like they're teal, like purple. Like a darker purple. I should go with Angelica's dress, kind of. Mm. Not taking it. Let's see. 
pink. Yeah, I think the light pink is probably probably the best for this. Actually, since we have a five um, already cut, we're gonna go with the five being pink purple. So we can do something like this. and add that on or we can use the teal and keep it like that which I kind of like more yeah we'll go with this one so you can either put pop dots behind your number um, to make it pop in 3d which I'm going to do um, or you can glue it down however you prefer. I am going to use some of this pop dot tape. It's pretty thick, so I'll just use, I'll just cut it down. And I get this tape from the Dollar Tree. They have a whole crafting section. Um, I'm not sure if they have it in all Dollar Trees, but they have it by the one where my son works. There's a Dollar Tree by where I live and they don't have a craft section yet. Um, every time I go in there, I ask them when they look at me like, didn't you ask this question yesterday? I'm like, you never know, you ask different people and, and different people have different answers. So, um, yeah, they keep telling me soon, 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 but every time I go in there, that's their answer, soon. So I don't know when to expect it. Um, so the good part is that I have to pick my son up from work. So I leave a few minutes early, I jump into um, Dollar Tree, and then by the time he gets out, I'm already done. And we're headed back home. So I, I usually buy a few packs to last me some time. So now we'll take that and just apply it onto the other piece as such. These um, numbers I make using the Cricut. I just go into um, the font not the font, the website. I go into the font section in the Cricut and I look for double layer fonts uh, and then I use one of those. I have a subscription so I have access to the fonts um, but they usually charge like if you don't have a subscription they charge like $4.99 or something like that for, for the uh, numbers. So it gives it a little 3D effect. Okay. You could double layer your pop dots to make it stand out more. I'm just doing this pretty quickly. Um, so, okay, so for this, we're going to take, and you can either circle and glue your entire center, or you could just glue the pin. But just If you glue the pin, just make sure that you're keeping it in a distance to where it's not going to um, affect your your decor outside and when you place it you want to make sure it matches up with the back piece so that you don't have uneven layers so then i like to push on the front like from the back to the front to make sure that it adheres okay there it's on nice and solid we're gonna go ahead and apply our number there and then let's put this stuff away real quick 
Hey guys, sorry about that. I didn't realize that the camera <laughs> had turned off. Um, I was talking and assembling and didn't realize that my battery died. So um, I'm back. Um, as you can see, I kind of added the pieces that I cut earlier onto the pin in sections. Um, what I'm going to do is apply glue to keep them um, down. And then I am going to continue moving on by um, creating the name in Cricut Design Space. So I'll kind of walk you through that and show you how it's done. Um, for the most part, I just like to apply everything, like I said earlier, in its place beforehand so that I know where I'm putting everything. Um, and it just places well. I know what the space I'm working with. I know my, you know, my distance. I know um, if it looks good ahead of time. So because once you put it down, there's no turning back. And so for me, this adds texture, um, especially with a theme like this, that it's so playful on top. You don't want it to be completely boring on the bottom. Um, so I like to be a little extra sometimes. And give it a little pop of... If you guys see me on camera, I do apologize. I look like crap today. Um, my hair is not done. I am still in pajamas. And I'm just relaxing. Yes, I am. I like it like that. And then we're gonna just glue this last one on. And I use um, tweezers. I have a gazillion pairs of tweezers um, from plastic to um, steel, or whatever you call them, stainless steel. Um, but to be honest, these plastic ones are probably my favorite. Oh, see, I messed up, guys. Hopefully I can clean this up. The plastic ones are my favorite because they're so delicate. They're not heavy, they're really lightweight, they don't get in the way. Um, so that's why I like that. Now I'm debating if I want to just use pop dots here or if I want to adhere this down with glue and I'm almost leaning towards glue. Okay, so I'm going to bring you into design space now. And this is where I um, create the image that I'm going to use, and or rather resize the image that I'm going to use, and I create the name. Um, so you can do two things. You can either open a new project and, you know, build brand new, um, start, you know, make a, a three-point like a perfect circle I'll show you guys so I would add a shape and then I'm going to resize my circle and make it a three by three so I'm gonna go three by three and enter so this is my base right this is what I'm working with this is this part here so this is that circle. I'm gonna keep my five here, so that means I only have half, maybe a little more than, well, yeah, about half space to work with, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a square, and, that, and this is just for reference, okay? This is not, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you're not gonna slice it or anything, like this is just, 
for me to know what my half is, okay? Because I want to know how much space I have to be um, playing with. So I'm going to leave that there. And now I'm going to my images and I'm going to type in Rugrats only because I already have Rugrats images already saved. Um, this is why when you're in design space, it's important to tag um, or to give it a name that you're going to remember what it is. So for this pin, I am going to go with Angelica. Um, so I'm going to insert the image. And Angelica is huge. So I'm going to bring down her height to about 2.5. Okay, keeping in mind that her ponytail is the very, or her pigtail is the very tip of where her height begins. So she's not going to be as big. Um, and so she's, she's good there. That's a good placement for her. Okay, so I can now get rid of this. And then I can hide this. Now I have a seven inch I could have kept my square and just resized it, but I have a seven inch square. I mean, a one inch, <laughs> sorry. I'm lying, it's 0 0.78, 0 0.78 by seven. So that's how long my white ribbon was. But now I took off about an inch and a half. So let's bring this down to 5.5, .5. so this is the space that we're working with. No, mentira, that's a lie. I'm gonna bring this down to four. That's as big as the space, that's about four inches with what we're working with um, to apply our name. Yep, it's four inches. So this is where I'm going to add my text, okay? So let's put um, Haley. All right, we're gonna add, we're gonna move Kaylee over here. Let's move this. Let's get Kaylee centered. And now, We want to make sure that each letter can be placed. So now what I want to do is ungroup, okay? So that's going to allow me to move my letters around. So I can now change this to capital since I didn't do it before. We're going to make all of these letters capital. So now we have our name, and I'm keeping it super simple. I actually have a Rugrat um, font, which would probably look really cool. So if I chose to do that, then I can just type in Kaylee again, and then go up here into font, search font, click Rugrats, and select that. So now there's my font, which I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go with that one. So I'll delete all of these. And then I'm going to ungroup once I find my right size there. Okay, so ungroup it. And now I just move them in. So that's how it'll look. Um, I'm going to make them different colors. Remember we have a white uh, center here. So I want them to be purple. 
So I'm going to change my colors, add this to be purple. I want this to be, let's go green. I'll do the eye yellow or pink. Maybe pink. We'll do this one yellow. And then we'll do the Y. Hmm. Let's do the Y orange. We don't have no orange in here. But there's some orange in the pen. So now we can get rid of this box, okay? So now we have our cut, which is the name. And then we have our print here. So we're gonna click up here. I don't know if you can see my mouse where it's going, but up here it says make it. We're gonna click on make it. And there's our print image. I'm gonna click continue. First I wanna see if I have paper. Okay. I have paper in my printer. And then, so I'm going to click send to printer. I click on this use dialog and I add bleed. I'm going to click my printer. I'm going to click print. And this setup box is going to come on. Now for, it depends on your printer. Um, for my printer, it is a laser jet. Um, and so I have 65 pound card cardstock inside. So I want to be able to make sure that it, it actually burns on that, um, paper. So I'm going to go into preferences and then here in paper quality, actually in shortcuts, um, if you can save your images, your best bet is to save it there. I tried that, but to be honest, it, it kind of keeps getting messed up um, for every image is different, so I don't even use it. But I go into paper quality, and then I make sure that it's auto select. And paper type, I choose HP, where is it? I think I just passed it. HP matte. 200 grams here we go so HP cover mat 200 grams and then I go into where is it where is it into color and then I change it to vivid and then I click OK and now I print and the image will begin to print. So as I mentioned um, earlier, I would have to pull out the laminating machine if I decided to do this cut right now with you guys. Um, but for this tutorial, I am not going to laminate it. It's just going to be too much work for me to pull everything else out. Um, and I have to actually run and pick my son up from work in about 30 minutes. So I don't want to go through all of that. So here's your print and cut image, okay? Look how crisp it comes out. What we're gonna do is we're going to take our mat, slide this over. We'll take our mat. We'll put our mat. And then we'll put our image on the mat. Put your machine on cardstock, depending on the, the type of paper you're printing, I mean you're cutting on, and then just run it through. Sorry for the noise, guys.
So we pull it out. And there's our image. There's Angel. Angelica. Angelica. Now, usually I will pull out my tools and do all of that, but I don't have the time. I'm going to go ahead and put this up. Now we have the letters, or a little glitter. Um, what else that we need to do. And so I'm gonna get my glitter mat and then I'm gonna go ahead and get my colors. Um, I have scraps, so I'm gonna wind up using those. So I'll pull out my scrap drawer and just to kind of go through and pull each color that we're going to use. So we know we're using yellow, we're going to use green, we're going to use purple, and again I'm using scraps because um, these are really small letters that we're doing. Since I don't have pink strap, so I'll just cut out the scrap for pink. It's literally going to be um, like half an inch letters. So we got purple, pink, we need orange. So that is the five letters that we need. We put this back. Okay. So now with my glitter mat, and I have and use a specific mat for glitter, only because I go through mats so quickly um, because of my glitter, like my glitter um, projects. It gets super frustrating um when it gets super frustrating when i need a like a good mat and then i don't have one because there's glitter everywhere so i just decided you know what i'm just gonna buy a mat for glitter projects and glitter projects only and so that's the reason why i have a glitter mat so i'm gonna take my orange for the first letter and now we're going to change our setting on the Cricut change it to I do postal board plus for glitter I know there is a glitter setting already um, I just don't use the custom settings I just figure it out along the way um, my blade is okay I have to replace it anyway, so I'm just going to use it. But you would want to put a deep cut blade um, so that it cuts really good. The glitter paper is really thick. So we're going to remove this. And 
And so I'm using my nails. Um, but you can use a tool if you want. Look how tiny they are. It like literally is the size of my nail. So we're gonna move that over. Our next color is yellow. I'm gonna put the yellow here and run it through the machine. letters are so dainty um, I'm a little nervous about applying them because we use hot glue and so you don't want the glue to like go over the actual letter and seep out through the through the sides so we're just gonna keep moving down using all our colors next is purple and then pink I should have probably bolded the letters, but whatever, I didn't. It's so little cute. It's so little, so cute. watch this entire video you guys rock I know some people will fast forward and be like all right get to the point I'm trying my friends I am trying trust me I'm trying I feel like I'm missing a letter unless I spelled this name wrong oh so I have two colors to go okay um, and then one thing I'm noticing is that my, my glitter is like looking chunky on these letters, like there's pieces falling out. So I don't know if it's getting stuck in the blade. You want to always check for that because then it'll start tearing your paper, maybe all of these little white things. Some little residue from the paper. And that's pretty much what I'm trying to avoid um, this from happening. I'm going to have to. See, so you get those little um, extra card stock. And again, it just depends on the paper type and the settings that you're using. And for this video, I'm just going pretty quickly. So, um, I do apologize. And this paper that I'm using um, that purple paper is actually from Michael's. Um, it's Recollections. You know, for the most part, I get all of my supplies locally. Um, I don't really shop Amazon unless, like, it's something that I need and can't get my hands on. Um... But yeah, I, I'd rather go into the stores and browse and touch and feel, see what new items they have, any new products. Just my preference. But... You know, guys, now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, yeah, maybe I should have added 
Maybe I should have added um, the laminating. Maybe I'll come back and, and do that part. Only because I feel like it'll look so much cuter. Gosh, this is frustrating. Okay, we'll see. Vamos a ver. All right, guys, bear with me because I'm just placing the letters. I don't know if you can see me on camera or not, but I'm here. And so that is how it'll look. What I'll do is cover my mat. I can put this away because we're done using that. Okay. Try to stay organized. And so that here is how the pen will look. So now what we're gonna do is adhere this stuff on. I'm still indecisive, I don't know yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop dot her on because I don't want to make her permanent. I think I'm going to wind up changing it to um, laminated. So for the most part, I'll just use two pop dots on her. Um, I'm just going to fold it in half to give her a little bit more of a... A 3D dimension. I wish I can get my husband to go pick up my son. Maybe I can convince him. He's gonna think I'm working. He's like, I'm going right now, but I don't wanna go. Um, I'm gonna wind up going anyway because I gotta go to PetSmart and get my rabbit some food. So we'll just put Angelica there for now and with the number five we'll keep it there for now I'm also just gonna put a pop dot to hold it in place for now Just keep that there, that there, and now the fun part. This is where it gets tricky, my friends. So patience is everything here, okay? What you don't want to do is put too much glue, but you want to get enough to where you outline it. and then place it. And any extra residue like from the glue, just be sure to take that off before um, you complete your project so that it has a, f a clean finish. Um, 
I see people sell stuff with blue chunks. And remember that appearance is everything, especially when you are building your brand. Um, the first thing that people look at is attention to detail. So just keep that in mind when um, you're actually selling your product and even promoting it. Um, you know, I always tell everyone, you know, it's kind of like when you meet somebody, um, you know, if they're not dressed appropriately or something, when you walk away, that's the first thing you remember, how they, how they um, presented themselves. So just remember that you should think the same way about your products. Can I interrupt real quick? Well, you just did. So, <laughs> yes, so. What do you think? Two inches from the, the seam? Give me one second. One and a half. Because mm -hmm. that's where the tip of the crown is going to go. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. He's so funny. He said, can I interrupt after interrupting? But yes, so just make sure that, you know, your attention to detail is on point. And so, there you have it. How cute is that? So that is your pen. Now you can go ahead and add whatever you'd like to it. Um, get creative, you know, make it your own, do your thing. I am going to add my felt background. My pin. And then I am going to add my backing. I have no idea. Uh, look, I'm just, I'm telling you, my family, I love them to pieces. But they have to stop touching my stuff. They really do. Because I don't know how much more I can take of it. Every time I'm looking for something, I can't find it. Because either my husband or my son decided they needed to use it for something that is not craft related. And I keep telling them, like, you guys are making me spend more money than what I have to. Because every time I need something, it's either broken or damaged and I have to rebuy it. And then they'll go ahead and still use the new one that I buy, knowing I just lectured them. It's frustrating. So for this size pen, I, I like to use the, I would say the medium size in this because they come really small, medium, and then really big. Um, and this can be bought on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description box below for you guys so that you can purchase it. I don't know why I moved that. I'm going to take my felt background and I'm going to apply glue all throughout. Okay. And then I'm going to apply that onto the cardstock. So this gives it that nice, clean, again, about appearance, finished look. I know some people would be like, oh, that's the back, who cares? Nobody can see that. No, I care. I want you to have what you're paying for. I don't want you to have anything less. So I care about every single detail, including the back. Um, I don't like unfinished products. I don't think that an unfinished product should be even considered, you know, a product. That's just my opinion, but I feel like if somebody is paying for something, give them something worth paying for, uh, the same way you would expect. So I like to put the lock in the bottom um, for the simple fact that if, you know, it pops 
open by chance, it can just poke the baby or the little one and you don't want that. So what I like to do is make sure that this clasp, see how it opens? It should open and your lock should be, your lock should end up um, at the bottom because then it has to go all the way around to open and the chances of that happening is slim to none. So the lock part should be on your left hand side of the pin. Take some glue. Apply it to the center. Push down a little bit. And there's your pin. What I like to do, this is not needed, but what I like to do is to make sure that that pin is going nowhere. Remember, kids are using these. I don't wanna be responsible for anybody's child getting pinched or hurt. Even though I use in my, in my listings, I put with parents um, supervision. This can only be used with parental supervision. So, that parents know this is not a toy, this is just an accessory and it should be um, monitored. So what I like to do is take an extra piece of felt with my freeing scissors and I like to finish it off. That way I know the pin is not going nowhere. And even if the pin wanted to fall off, it's got to get through this fabric first and that's not happening. Um, and there you have a finished back, okay? And so that's what your pen looks like. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you liked, give it a thumbs up. If you're subscribed, great. If you're not, please subscribe. I am going to be dropping some more videos um, a little bit more often. I have a lot of things that I make, like I said in my first video. Um, and so... This just gives me the opportunity to show you guys how I make stuff. Uh, and if I could save you a few bucks from having to actually, you know, go and buy the stuff um, already made. If you have the craft items on hand, then, you know, hey, everybody can save a little bit. Right now in these trying times, you know, every little bit counts. So let's be grateful for what we have, use what we have, and and apply ourselves um if so this is what the finished product looks like super cute lovely this is the back nice and finished so guys i hope you like the video if you like give it a thumbs up Please like my channel, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification buttons for future videos. Uh, I'll be uploading a video once a week going forward um, from all craft-related items. So it could be anything. I, I don't have a specific order that I plan on going in, um, but yeah, it'll be fun. I promise the videos will get better. I'll, I'll be... <laughs> I'll be a little bit more YouTube-ish, I guess, by then, um, as the time goes by. So, yeah, like my channel. Don't forget. Talk to you guys later. Bye.